Hi, and welcome to the 2018 Paper 2, Leaving Start Ordinary Level, Question 5. As usual with the questions, I suggest you pause the video and try them yourself. Um, there's a few sections here, I think it's A and B, okay. And just, if you can't get them, well, we can go through them. If you get them, great, okay. So if you want to send notes I'm working off, just send me, a, a, me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And that email address is in the description below. The question five here wasn't well answered, okay, because this is a, let's say a complicated diagram, but it seemed to put a lot of people off, okay. They misread lots of things and did lots of strange things. But this part A is worth 10 marks of the 25. Let's see what's going on. Part A says the square A, B, C, D. Now, I'll say it now. Um, make sure you understand what the question is asking. Okay, if you have to read that question five times, fair enough. Ten times, fair enough. Nobody else knows how many times you're reading it. Okay. And, and when you understand exactly what's going on, then you're in a position to, 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 to go ahead and try something. Okay, and maybe what you try will be wrong. Hopefully you get it wrong in the practice and then the, on, the, on the big day of the exam, that won't be a problem because you'll have seen something like this before. It'll trigger a memory that triggers a memory that triggers a memory. Okay, so I'll read it through and then we'll describe, look at the diagram and see if we can make sense of it. So the square ABCD has sides of length 7. Okay, so the square ABCD. And there's 7 in total. The vertices of the square PQRS, now that's the square in here, okay, it's kind of on its axis, lie on the perimeter of ABCD as shown in the diagram. So basically the points here, the vertices, touch parts of that bigger square. Um, now with, uh, with AQ equals 5, so you see here this, this segment of the, of the bigger square is 5, meaning that this next segment is 2. That's the first trick. You put two in there on the diagram, as long as the examiner notices it, you have your three marks. Okay. Um, find the area of the square PQRS. So if this is two here, well, this is five here. Two, five, two, five, two. Remember, every side is seven in length. You were told that um, here, whatever. So if you look at there, well, that's a shape. I have a triangle there. It's right angled. Okay. The second you see a right angle triangle in maths, for me anyway, the word Pythagoras jumps to my head. Then I go, well, Pythagoras theorem. Is this of use to me here? I'm looking for this length PQ. Okay. Because if I can find that, then I can just use that. Because the, if that was whatever it is, that length, that length, that length, and that length are the same. If it was the perimeter I was being asked for, I'd add all the sides. But it's not, it's the area of that square, so I multiply length by breadth. Now, in this case, it's length by length because they're of equal size. So if I can find that, okay, I'll be, I'll be able to com complete the question. Now, how is there any a way of finding that? Well, Pythagoras theorem will work because I know two sides of the, of the three sides. If you know two of the three things, you can solve for the missing thing. Let's go straight to the answer here. Now, I've used the, uh, that was Paris means length of. So the length of PQ, that line there, it's actually the hypotenuse, okay, put the right angle back in there, is equal to one side squared plus the other side squared. So I'm just taking it as AP squared, which remember is two, and AQ squared, which you're told is five. So PQ squared, which we're looking for, is equal to two squared plus five squared. Now two squared is four, five squared is 25. So four plus 25 gives you the 29 here. And we're not done yet because that we, it's, we have some length squared equals 29, the way to resolve that is bring the square across the equal, it changes to its opposite. The opposite of squaring is square root. So PQ is equal to the square root of 29. Now, I maybe don't need the units yet, but I would always put units in at the end of any calculation if you, if you know them. And if you don't know them, put in the word, the word units. So that's the first bit. So I now know that this length here is the square root of 29. Now, every other side is the exact same thing. Square root of 29, whatever. So if I want to find the area, multiply length by length, so multiply square root of 29 by square root of 29. That gives me the square root of 29 squared, which means the square the square root can cancel, and you're left at 29, and that's centimeters again. Now, I would suggest put to the calculator, okay, just to check your answer, but I'm gonna go through the long way just to get across that point. Anything by itself is squared. A square always cancels a square root. There are often the tricks you might need to solve something more complicated in algebra or whatever, and we need to know these tricks. Even though the calculator is handy, there's no substitute for the knowledge of the actual maths that's going on. So that's part A. 
Now part B here, there's two parts in there. Part one and two are marked together, and they're given a 15D scale. So if you can get one of the parts correct, fully correct, you'll get the high partial. That's usually how they do it. Okay, now that could change, but that's usually how they do it. So let's try to get one of these two parts right. Now part two can be a bit tricky, but it was fairly well answered. Part one should be fairly easy. If people you know, find it hard, I apologize. Okay, but I mean, we can go through that, I'll show you why. The circles U and V, so we have two circles that are touching. Okay, the smaller one is U, the bigger one is V. Uh, represent two wheels that are free to rotate about their centers, as shown. The radius of U is four centimeters. The radius of V is, is 6 centimeters. So I might as well draw them on, okay? So that's 4, okay, and that's 6. Probably not enough to get you to low partial, okay, but eh, might. Um, in fairness, most students made a stab at this, okay? Although a lot found the area, not the circumference. The last thing that says, find the length of the circumference of each circle. Give your answer in centimeters in terms of pi. Now, in the math tables, if you go to the circle, Okay, I might just bring up the math table for this, okay. Uh, where do I have them? Where on earth is it? So that's the math tables, okay? You look in here, actually I'm gonna just go through the beginning, okay? You have the parallelogram, whatever, the quadrilateral tra trapezius, uh, circle, okay? So the length, no, or circumference, is equal to two pi r. The area is equal to pi r squared. So if you're stuck in any question, always go, look, go through and see, can you find the shape? If you can find the right formula and put something into it, you're halfway there, okay, and you've done well. Okay, so I'll leave that open. Um, now going back here, so, we said there are circumference, I'm using C because I'm old school. Um, that's two pi r. And the question says, leave our answer in terms of pi. So we're not actually asked to calculate pi out. So that becomes two times pi, and we'll go straight to the answer here. Two times pi times four for the circle u. Two times four is eight, so it's eight pi is cm squared. Now the circumference of v, same formula, okay, but it's in, in v, this, the radius is six. So 2 pi 6 is your answer. Simplify it. 2 times 6 is 12. You get 12 pi cm squared. Job done. Okay, 11 marks. Now, part 2 is a little trickier. Okay, let's read through it. The wheels U and V are in non-slip contact. There's no friction. And therefore, the rotation of one causes the other to rotate. Find the number of complete rotations wheel U makes if wheel V completes 100 rotations. Now, some will find this really easy, and they realize that if V rotates once, it's going to move U more than once. Okay, U will turn faster. Now, other mightn't make that leap, <clears throat> but hopefully that will be something that could be, you know, um, understandable. So we're looking here, I have the circumference of V is 12 pi, the circumference of U is 8 pi. So for one revolution, I'm missing how many times revolutions does U go through uh, for every revolution that V goes through. Now, if I divide 12 pi by 8 pi, that's a way of finding out how many 8 pi's are in 12 pi. And it works out that there are one and a half of them. So in 100 rotations, so for every one rotation of V, U rotates one and a half times. So for every 100 rotations, uh, U is going to rotate 1.5 times more. So multiply them together, and I end up with 150 rotations. So if you, if you get it, it's easy, but it was, I can see how people could have a big problem with that because it's, there's a lot of text going on here and it could just end up confusing you. Now, this is the end of the question. Okay, so this is the end of um, question five. Thanks and see you on question six.